Hi again. I promised for some time that I will make a review about these uh, lithium uh, iron batteries. And um, these are the A123 cells, uh, 20 amp hour uh, prismatic cells. And um, this is the final product, uh, how I uh, built the, the battery. Actually not the final product, it's the final mechanical product because um, I did not build the controller, I mean the battery management system for this battery, so uh, this will be done, but uh, I don't know exactly when I will have time for this. And the reason I didn't do a, a video about this battery is because I expect a, a larger battery, also lithium iron, from a different uh, company, and um, I didn't receive it yet. so. Uh, I want to make a, a review comparison between those two technologies because they are even they are lithium iron they are a bit different so um, I will wait for for those but I will just make this short video to show you how I built the the 24 volt battery using eight uh, of these lithium iron cells so this is a 24 volt uh, 20 amp hour battery. Actually, it's more like 25 point something because this is not a lead chip, this is a lithium iron, so it has a bit of a different voltage output, but uh, it's not that different. They, they can be um, used in the same applications, uh, sometimes even with the same chargers with no problems. I will talk more about this when I will do the review, but um, I didn't make made a video when I made this uh, when I built this battery. But I have some pictures, so uh, I will show you those pictures next. So these are the photos from the uh, battery case built. Um, first thing I did, I was at a local hardware store and purchased this um, uh, 30 centimeter by 60 centimeter aluminum plate or uh, 12 inch by 24 inch, it's a standard size and actually what this was the, the only type of uh, aluminum plate that I was able to get at this local hardware store, so I had no choice. Uh, it's about 0 0.1 inch thick or uh, 2.5 millimeter but uh, without the the model on the front uh, there is a brilliant or brilliance or something like that the the kind of striation on the front of the of the plate I think this this was the name of the the model I don't know it's it seems to be very common uh, anyway, I was thinking that I could uh, cut this uh, aluminum plate using just a simple uh, uh, knife cutter, but um, it seems I was wrong. It's probably this is um, um, a different type of aluminum alloy or something like that because I did cut before um, aluminum plates using just a simple knife tool. But um, at this time I was not able to. It seems um, it it is a little bit thicker than usual. Usually I have just two millimeter thick aluminum plate, but I think also the material was uh, a bit uh, harder to cut than what I used to have, and also the striation on the front didn't help. They also have a, a height of about the same 2.5 millimeters so um, there is a total of 5 millimeters of aluminum plate so uh, not being able to, to cut it this way I was forced to use uh, an electric tool the, it's a cordless uh, 18 volt uh, firestorm uh, um, cutter with a metal blade it's from Black and Decker. It's 
extremely noisy and I live in a in an apartment building so I didn't really I really didn't want to use this tool but um, I had no ch no choice I was not able to cut it otherwise I uh, hope to move soon from here and um, then I could uh, make as much noise as I want <laughs> but uh, yeah anyway hope no no neighbors were bothered by the noise it didn't took too much next thing I did was to take these two plates put it together and drill uh, holes to both of them at the same time so there will be no misalignment or anything like that and of course I used um, a phone book it's the, the best thing to to have for drilling holes if you don't want to drill holes in into your carpet or something and um, um, after after I did this I had to um, to get some uh, screws and connectors for the um, for the battery terminals and I was not able to find anything special at the hardware store so I uh, I came up with the idea to use the um, uh, AC plugs this, these two AC plugs uh, actually I had three of them so I could use three terminals for a, a negative uh, and three for a positive terminal and um, I think they are made of copper or maybe brass or some some material like that so uh, I hope it will not be too incompatible with the uh, terminal uh, material so they will not uh, uh, oxidize or um, they will not corrode actually but um, yeah I, I had no choice I hope that everything will work fine uh, I will see in uh, maybe 10 years <laughs> I don't think there will be a problem so um, I uh, I used two uh, wires for each uh, of these uh, uh, terminals so um, and at two of them for positive and negative had three wires because one of the the wires one of the wire will go to the um, uh, battery management system so uh, that's why some of these have three wires and the rest of them have two so I will have in total six wires for uh, uh, negative and six wires for positive and these are number 18 wires or uh, I think 0 0.8 uh, square millimeter wires they are copper wires and they are um, uh, I think they are uh, tin plated or something like that not sure exactly uh, what they are plated with but anyway yeah, it's um, copper plated with something as you can see in this picture the, um, the drilled terminal it's the positive terminal it's made of aluminium and it's folded in uh, N2 so it will be a bit thicker and the other one it's the the negative terminal it's made of copper and it's plated with something I don't know exactly with what uh, but um, I will make sure uh, to have this always on top of the aluminium uh, uh, terminal when I fold them so that uh, brass screws that I use and not screws uh, nuts and um, uh, bolts that I use are not uh, going to corrode this uh, terminal hopefully and um, also I use brass uh, washers so uh, they will be in contact with this uh, terminal always with this terminal except for the first first positive one that uh, I have no choice here and as you see in this next picture uh, I fold the copper uh, terminal over the aluminium one so uh, and this will be always the case until the last uh, 
cell. And there will be eight cells in this battery bank and always the copper terminal will be on top of the aluminum one. So um, I use three screws on each uh, uh, terminal connection so they should be more than enough and um, I think the washers are a bit larger than uh, than the screws I mean uh, the hole inside the washer it's not for made for this type of screw but uh, I speci specifically chosen this uh, washers just to be larger and have a larger surface area to press on the on the tabs and what I also use is uh, there are um, I think they are locking washers or something like that they are like a, a spring and when you um, uh, tight these uh, bolts and nuts together this uh, washer will keep pressure on the on the plate all the time so um, even if they they are not very uh, they don't have a very strong connection it will always be maintained by this uh, kind of springs and um, as you can see one of the I use one of the screws to connect the the wire for the BMS from so for the battery management system so I am able to measure the uh, voltage on any cell and um, I will do this for all the cells so for eight cells you have nine wires because you have the uh, positive and negative at the ends and then you have seven other wires in in between the batteries where the connections are made and as you can see here when I drill there is a lot of um, I don't know how to call this me me metallic uh, uh, I don't know the English word span but but you you can see in this picture it's um, it's a lot of uh, metal flowing around and you will not want to touch the terminals because they will short the the battery and uh, these batteries can put out a lot of current so uh, you'll not want to do this so you always need to insulate between terminals with something uh, um, good enough I mean I will not use paper or something that could be uh, easily penetrated by the screwdriver or something else because uh, it uh, it will not be nice to have a big flame <laughs> uh, when you are working on these batteries you need to to be quite careful and as you see here uh, I was almost done uh, I made all the connections and um, I only needed to put the top plate and close everything down just before I end this video I will show you uh, this PVM uh, solar charge controller uh, I will use this together with a solar panel uh, to charge the battery and so this battery will be used in a solar application not uh, in a car or motorcycle or anything else it will be for solar application so um, um, there will be not the charge current will not be very high and as you can see this uh, the power consumption of the PVM controller about uh, just under 15 milliamps and um, as you can see the battery is fully charged it's about 26.7 volt and um, yeah that's about it um, 
I don't have anything else about the battery. I will make a review later, but uh, for right now, this was just uh, what I wanted to show you how I built the, the battery.